Ireland is a land of contrast, from the serenity of its countryside to the hustle of its cities. Yet one thing Ireland's three and a half million people share is a common love for what they consider the most beautiful country in the world. You find people every day are different, and the country is different every day as well because the seasons change, the wind, the rain, mist, a uh, sunny day. It's fantastic. Every day, that it doesn't matter if you only drive two miles, you see something different every day. Like the countryside changes so often in the different seasons, you know, from spring to summer to winter, you know. But as you can see here in the west of Ireland, it is it is very nice, very open space, plenty of hospitality and everything that goes with it. <laughs> Aside from the sheer beauty of Ireland, one thing that is even more striking about this country is the beauty and warmth of its people. And while the English may have invented their language, ask anyone in this country and they'll tell you it took an Irishman to refine it. I often wonder that myself. Why is it? We're known as the conversation capital of the world. We have a wonderful literary tradition. We have, for the size of the country, you know, our, our literary heritage is, is extraordinary. We have three Nobel Prize winners for literature. I think possibly it stems mostly really from uh, the fact that we, 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 we enjoy meeting people and, and we enjoy conversation. One of the key differences between the States and Ireland is the pace of life here. The Irish always manage to find time for a good pint and for some good conversation. Nowhere is that more evident than in the Irish pub. Contrary to what many visitors might think, the Irish pub is not solely a place for food and drink. It's the social center of the community, a spot where many of the world's greatest problems are often resolved over a pint of Guinness. You can take any subject under the country, under the wind here, and you'll find that uh, you know, everything has been discussed. Everything will be discussed in a pub, pub scene. They'll solve the problems of the world. It's amazing what people will solve over a couple of pints. The weather to religion to politics to, as you say, unemployment, anything. Do they come up with some solutions to some of the world's greatest problems? <laughs> they try to, but I think once they leave the pub, they're forgotten again. I mean. Among their favorite topics of conversation is the Irish thoroughbred. Ireland's fascination with horses dates back to the 11th century when the Normans introduced them to the country. That ancient love is carried on today by horse breeders like John Clark. Irish people as a nation have a natural affinity with the horse and they got very much involved in it. The Irish uh, horseman has something which you can't define, a natural inbuilt uh, ability to handle horses and to get the most out of them. There are some excellent horse breeding stables scattered about Europe and the United States, but John feels the climate and the condition of the land here in Ireland are perfectly suited for producing what he considers the finest horse in the world. But the Irish horse is best, full stop. Nothing further to say on that. They win more races, they are better broodmares. We have some of the greatest stallions in the world standing in Ireland. The Irish bloodstock industry is a very powerful one, but the Irish horse worldwide is the best of all. For John, working with these animals is not just another job, it's a way of life. And with the birth of each fall comes a new excitement. You're all the time striving for perfection. And perfection in this business is very hard to get. So that's, that's what keeps you going all the time. And just a love for horses. Just to see there's a foal that's just a day old now. Um, it's just to see they're, they're absolutely beautiful. dynamic young population. Over 50% of our population are under 28 years of age. We're extremely well educated. We have an excellent third level education. We have a lot going for us and I think our future is looking very rosy and there is, a, there is an air of uh, optimism you know, in the city and in the country generally. 
Unfortunately, that sense of optimism is not shared by everyone in this country. Although Ireland has attracted a number of high-tech industries in recent years, the country is still battling high taxes and a rising unemployment rate. The end result? Some of Ireland's brightest young minds are leaving their homeland in search of a better life. There's so much unemployment that unfortunately people can lose dignity because you do need, no matter how beautiful a country is, you do need work. I don't see it getting better at the moment. I mean, the government is, everything is cuts, 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 cuts. It's all, everything seems to be closing down and people are going away. Despite a high unemployment rate and more attractive job opportunities abroad, there are still a number of young Irish who through sheer initiative and determination are making a go of it in their homeland. If people decide to take their destiny in their hands and do something about it, I don't think that the government is going to do anything about it. I'm not sure that it's the role of a government to do anything about it anyway. It's up to people to create their own situation and, and go for it. But here it's apathy rules, you know. Um, and maybe if, if the mentality here changed a little, then the Irish could succeed at home. Students, are, when they graduate, they don't get jobs suitable to their qualification, so they go away. I think, though, there could be a future for them in terms they'll go away, they'll get the skills, they'll be really experienced, and they might come back and work at home. And that way it'll be a much, a much better system, a much better country. That hope for a brighter future is shared by Kathleen O'Sullivan, an elementary school teacher from County Kerry. Personally, uh, I think our Irish system is a great system. Uh, I think we have a very high standard of education, even though we do not have the same equipment or our facilities that they do have in the States. The Nakaderi National School in Farrenfor is a long way from one of the larger, more well-equipped schools you'd find in Dublin. But what it lacks in resources, it makes up for in dedicated teachers like Kathleen. Padre. This particular area, Farn uh, 4, we're right in the middle of the, the country. Uh, the background is very, very rural. Most children in the school would come from uh, a rural background. In fact, most of them would come from farms. Uh, they're steeped to nature. The, their daily association with nature, I think, um, makes them different to, to children in city schools and in town schools where some of them perhaps have never seen a young calf or a young lamb. In many ways, Irish schools aren't terribly different from those in the States. They concentrate on the same subjects, mathematics, English, history, but beyond that they also place a great deal of emphasis on their culture and heritage. Why do you think it's important that we still try and keep it alive today? Well, we're Irish people and we should like it, we should keep up with the tradition. Like it is our language and everybody else knows their language. It's part of Ireland. It's one of the basic things that everyone has done in Ireland for a long time. It's very important to keep your roots and your heritage. Everyone does. Michael Jackson, huh? Well, when Michael Jackson first came out, he was really high. I thought he was all right. One person who is very impressed with Ireland's educational system is Maggie Gilvery, a second grade teacher from Montoursville. Maggie came to Ireland so she could get away from work for a couple of weeks. However, she was no sooner in the country a day when she found herself back in a classroom again. In this particular school, we, we, we aren't really aware of all the wealth of materials that we have at home. And these kids are doing great with just the basics and loving and caring teachers, which makes it the way to go all over. During the course of her visit today to the school here in Farron 4, Maggie did notice certain differences between the educational system in Ireland and the one in the United States. But the thing she found most amazing is the many ways that teachers and students on both sides of the Atlantic are really the same. One, two, three, four. It's almost like back to the, to the one-room schoolhouse again in the little house in the prairie and the Amish-type schools that we have in our country. And yet everybody is learning and everybody is caring and sharing and uh, kids are kids all over the world. It's just the same type of thing, really. You just get away from it, but then you get back to it and you realize that, that it's just the same all over. 
After acting, go out to a, cut the lawn and go dig the garden. The children of Farron Four can't you boast of having a modern facility or the latest in computer technology. However, Maggie says you can't help but envy other riches they possess. They have beautiful voices and they sing and they are happy with life and they seem to love each other and that's the important part of growing up. Just a few miles outside of Cork City lies Blarney Castle, home of the famous Blarney Stone. According to legend, the stone has the power to confer eloquence on all who kiss it. Blarney is also the home of another great legend, Big John. Why do you think Americans believe in the stone as much as they do? Well, I suppose they like legends, they like folklore. I mean, as per in the United States, two, three hundred years old is a lot. Like where we're standing at the moment is over 600 years and still standing, hopefully. Does it really work? Guarantees. Are your money back? Unfortunately, there are those skeptics who don't believe in the legend of Blarney Stone. But ask any one of the thousands of tourists who make the trek up here to the top of the castle each year, and they'll tell you the power of the stone is no myth. Well, it's a long haul up. The stairs are round and circular. I would say 150 steps. And of course, when you get there, it's the cream of the crop. You kiss the Barney Stone. And from then on, you're going to have good luck, good health, and Godspeed. Is there any truth to the legend behind Blarney Stone? Oh, absolutely. You should hear me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you come across a lot of skeptics who don't believe in the stone? Yeah, mostly continentals. Uh-huh. But not to go to All-American. <laughs> he, he likes his Blarney Stone. God bless him. <laughs> God bless America. No, no, he was correct. The female rock. To truly believe in the stone, it helps if you're Irish. But as my colleague Jim Haberski discovered, you don't have to be a full-blooded Irishman to acquire the gift of the gab. Jim, do you feel any different? Hi, I feel a lot different now. I don't know why. <laughs> Another Irishman well endowed with the gift of Blarney is Mike Tangney from Killarney. Mike represents the fourth generation in his family to run a jaunting cart business. Like so many of his fellow drivers, Mike is more than capable of giving you a good story as well as a scenic ride. Drivers of the, the cars are called Jarvis. We're called after a saint, which is Saint Jarlet. But uh, that doesn't mean we're all saints. <laughs> Up until about 50 years ago, joining carts were the only means of transportation in Killarney. Today, they're strictly a tourist attraction. But from Mike's point of view, they're really the only way to take in the beauty of this area. Okay, Michael. Come on. Nowhere else in Ireland will you get this tradition. We're, we keep it here in Killarney and we have, we're lucky enough to have our lovely lakes and parks to go through which is just preserved for the jaunting cars. Uh, we make a lovely tour of the park where there's no motor traffic allowed. If you want to see the park you either take a jaunting car or go on foot. When you come to Killarney it's a must, you have to go on the jaunting car. We say if you come to Killarney and you don't get on the jaunting car it's like going to Rome and not seeing the Pope. <laughs> It's not an easy job. At the peak of the tourist season, Mike will be running his cart 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week. But after 30 years of taking in Ireland's spectacular landscapes, Mike can honestly say he still enjoys his work. We keep going as long as we can. Do you think it's important to keep this tradition Oh, it alive? is very important. I, I, it's, uh, it's something that you'll never again get if it die out in Killarney. This is gone forever. Two others who hold a great respect for this land and its history are scientists Seamus Caulfield and Martin Downs. In the bog lands of northern Mayo, they've been researching the earliest roots of Irish farming. You're not going to, you're not going to see any of them. <laughs> And what we've got is an incredible system of well laid out fields, exactly like modern fields today, 10, 15, 20 acre fields, all regularly laid out. 
and they show not just a farming set up 5,000 years ago, but some organized central authority, either a group of village elders or some tribal, some chieftain taking a decision, but someone is taking a decision to organize this landscape and lay it out in the stonewall fields. One might wonder why scientists like Seamus and Martin would devote close to 20 years of their lives to researching an area like this. But they say it's the pure joy and excitement of piecing together that giant puzzle of what this land and its people would have been like 5,000 years ago. When people immigrated from here to the United States, they were leaving behind a farming technology that was very, very little different from 5,000 years ago. Isn't that a fantastic thought? To, to, to feel the continuity with your ancestors over that period, well, well that was something that, that just took me away. Yeah. Their work is far from over. Seamus and Martin have just barely begun to explore a site that encompasses more than 2,500 acres. But their excitement over this project continues to grow with each new discovery. It's a mixture of the science and the romantic, and maybe being a native of the area myself, I can identify more closely with it. But it's, um, it's, it's, it's a great mixture of all of these things, you know, and it's, 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 I'm delighted that it's my profession. Another area virtually untouched by time is the farmland surrounding Charlestown in County Mayo. It was here my mother, Nora Gallagher, was born and raised. Today, for the first time in 40 years, she's returned home to see her brother John and to relive some old memories. Well, it was most wonderful and I was really delighted to see her. I could not never be more delighted in my life and more happy than I was. I think now for a long, long time than I was to meet her last night and see her and have a chat. And we went back years and years. We went back uh, uh, many things that I had forgot about. And when she mentioned it, I remembered it well, you know. My brother was uh, second father to us. I always remember the past, how nice he was to us when we were younger than him. and, and uh, he guided us and uh, uh, tours were between right and wrong. My uncle and cousins would be the first to admit that working a small farm in Ireland these days is not necessarily the easiest way of life. But their love for this land is so strong, they say they couldn't imagine doing anything else. It's not really an easy life, but I think it's the peace and quiet, you know. And you have a lot of time to yourself, you know. You have your, up, your good days and your bad days, but then you can go off and have a day off for yourself and have a few drinks and nobody will disturb you. <laughs> the next morning, you know, you have to watch the clock to go to a factory job or that's like, I mean, the cows will always wait for you for an hour or two if you don't feel that well in the morning. Early days. In the 40 years since my mother emigrated to the United States, the Mulligans have witnessed dramatic changes on both sides of the Atlantic. But one thing that hasn't changed is the love between brother and sister. You never lose it. You never lose it till the day you close your eyes. As I look back on my visit to Ireland, what stands out in my mind is the beauty of this landscape. But the true heart of Ireland lies in its people, a warm and giving race with a constant smile and a love for life unparalleled by any other country. For photographer editor Jim Haberski, I'm Dan Gallagher saying thanks for joining us on our tour of the Emerald Isle. Gallagher's Travels in Ireland has been brought to you by Browns. You can buy a brown car or truck in any color.
Right, right down to the bottom. Oh. 